So in a recent video in the Notorious Joe Rogan podcast, we discovered that aliens speak through telepathy. Unfortunately, we can't yet do that, but we have some amazing argumentation of our speaking abilities. In this video, we are going to look into frontiers in speech cloning, what this means for speech editing, what are the economic and product implications of this amazing technology. And finally, we will take a look at potential security concerns. Okay, let's start from 2016. Adobe came up with a new type of video editor, one that basically let you change what you or any person has said in a completely natural way. In other words, you could make some tweaks to an audio record and basically improve or change the audio without having to re-record the same piece. Here is an example of what I mean. You guys have been making weird stuff online <laughs> <laughs> with photo editing. Well, we'll do the next thing today. Let's do something to human speech like changing what you have said in your wedding. Uh, I jumped out of the bed and, um, and uh, uh, I kissed my dogs and my wife in that order. <laughs> Project Vocal allows you to edit speech in text. So suppose uh, Michael K wants to send this uh, audio to his wife. So he actually wants his wife to go before the dogs. And uh, uh, I kissed my wife and my dogs. Whoa. <laughs> While it seemed vocal release was imminent, actually at the time of this recording, it is not yet in the market. Rumors are that there has been a USA government interference in the product release for security concerns. However, another company, uh, this company called Descript, has already released a product that actually lets you edit and modify audio with text editing and then re rendering the audio. Here is an example to understand exactly what they do. All this blue text I just typed directly into Descript and it generated the transcript. New service we're testing that allows you to easily hire professionals to help with your Descript projects. So you can see I can just go in here and say, hello there, how are you? And, or I could delete this and it'll regenerate the entire sentence fixing intonation and inflection and everything. And even editorial feedback. Hello there, how are you? Here's how. And this just makes it so nice to create videos. In the early reports about the two technology, pundits indicated that Vogel was superior. But as the time has gone and Vogel is not on the market, we really don't know which one is better. However, I believe that this gives us an opportunity to look at the core technology. The factor that defines the greatness of a voice cloning algorithm are one, how long of a speech you need to feed into the algorithm to synthesize a cloned voice. Two, how natural is the language. Three, how similar the voice sounds. And four, how big of the model we need to achieve this. In 2019, a state-of-the-art paper reach just five seconds of input speech to be able to clone a long sentence of a human voice. In another series of papers released in 2020, uh, other authors looked into real-time accent removal in foreign English speakers. It appears that the core evolutions of the technology is to migrate from a type of recursive neural networks to convolutional neural networks and the use of highly sophisticated encoding systems. Let's leave this aspect of the technology for the moment to uh, the pundits and let's focus on the business. In the past, I've explained that when we want to measure the economic impact of an AI, uh, we need to do it through three economic performance indicators. One is the cost reduction, two is the capacity or throughout improvement, three is subjectivity or, if you like, error reduction. In this case, we find that at the very minimum, by applying these technologies to audio editing, we can easily standardize the quality of the audio, we can produce a lot more audio podcasters without having to redoing or re-recording errored parts. And finally, we also increase capacity and we reduce production costs. 
So the three paradigms are all verified, basically. I envision applications in the space of low-cost production, such as uh, the personal podcasters, like this one, you know, the TikTok of the world, and the market podcasters. As the technology matures, we may see it going into real news, movies, and other major video productions. However, I think that there must be a reason why Adobe has not yet released it. And, and I suspect that it has to do with the quality of performances of this technology for the more professional markets rather than US government interference. Before I let you go, I want to say a few last words about nefarious applications of uh, this technology. Well, we have seen through the history of the mankind that we are kind of super good at finding better applications of new technology. And this is a simple fact that can be, however, a reason for ampering us from exploiting the benefit of a new technology. In this particular case, one could easily think of fake news, like for example, a president of a country saying something absurd, like, you know, uh, instigating a war, spreading through WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or Telegram or Signal, etc. Well, I believe we will eventually find a way, an antidote, a way to uh, block this. And quite frankly, fake news can be a lot entertaining at times, let's be honest. You see, I would never say these things, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. Today is a historic day. I have tremendous news. Today, we eradicated AIDS. Thank God. Thank you, Donald Trump. It's done. All done, folks. I took care of it. So, in my personal opinion, the show must go on. Bye-bye.